That's a Gaudi View laugh at Adkar. I'm your host, the guy that lifts barbell plates, eats t boat steaks, still has a Demeter that's sweeter than a chocolate cake, John Arhitis. And of course, we got the latest and greatest at Hudson County News. Now, it seems like every time we're here, we're talking about Jersey City Mayor Stephen Phillips run for governor. So that primary, which is still about 25 months away, He's already, uh, you know, moving and grooving. Last week we talked a little bit about his campaign team. We already had nine members announced there. And now yesterday we heard that he's got a key endorsement and he's actually going to be a co-campaign chair. That's Atlantic City Mayor Marty Smalls. You know, obviously a lot of people were expecting Mayor Fulop to get the uh, brunt of his support from North Jersey. This is obviously down south and that's in uh, George Norcross territory. We're expecting him to run Steve Sweeney or at least many are. Of course, again, it's very early. But that's a very interesting development, to say the least, so we're going to touch on that. And of course, on May 9th, we have two nonpartisan municipal elections, and that's in North Bergen and West New York, respectively. So I looked at those uh, campaign finance reports, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Even though both are pretty quiet races, there's a, been a ton of spending in uh, North Bergen, so we're going to talk about what that looks like over there. Also, in Jersey City, we saw that uh, someone that attended the January 6th Capitol riot in 2021 and who even po and posted pictures on his social media page, and that's how he ended up getting caught. He got sentenced to four months in prison. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. And of course, we have a uh, June 6th primary this year, and uh, we have someone running against the machine, and that's a progressive challenger, Adrian Gainda. So we're going to sit down and chat with him right after this word from our sponsors. Jersey City Ford, certified parts and service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty, which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights. Your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants. All major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-27. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, John Arhitis. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, today I'm joined with District 2 Hudson County Commissioner candidate, Adrian Gaynor. Adrian, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, John. So as you're well aware, a couple weeks ago, we had the incumbent Bill O'Day come out. And, uh, you know, look, a lot of people in progressive factions have supported Commissioner O'Day because he's, you know, voted against the budget sometimes. He's voted against the ICE contract. I'm sure we could come up with a lot of other examples. But why did you think that this was a seat that you wanted to challenge for? That's a great question, John. And for me, it just goes back to the need for more progressive voices in county politics and local politics in general here in North Jersey. And the reason that I personally got involved with the decision to run for this seat is because I think we need more creative policy choices here in Hudson County. We need things like our first Planned Parenthood location. It's kind of a shock to think that we have more crisis centers here in Hudson County than we do actual locations that offer abortion services. We need creative policy outlooks like a right to counsel at the county level that's universally uh, adapted and it's a great start what we have so far but we need to make sure that we have choices that are a little more stringent on what county politics currently looks like so would it be fair to say that you would like to see the county move further to the left is that reasonable to say yeah that'd be a reasonable thing to say okay now when we're talking about a, a new Planned Parenthood Center perhaps you know what role as a commissioner would you see yourself having if elected in getting that enacted Absolutely. So if I were elected as commissioner, the first thing that I think would be my jurisdiction is acting as an advocate for this location. 
So something that kind of gets forgotten here in local politics and county politics is that as elected officials, we have to advocate for the people that are in our district, but are also in Hudson County as a whole. Because we're not just fighting for policy that's just Jersey City exclusive. It's for Secaucus, it's for Kearney, it's for all the other municipalities and townships that often get lost in the shuffle. Which is why we have so many challengers in other seats too. Because a lot of people feel that there are just areas in Hudson County that are either getting neglected or they don't have advocates that are fighting for them and fighting for choices that should obviously make sense here in New Jersey. Okay. Now, specific to uh, the Planned Parenthood, I mean, where, where do you think would be a good location? Where would you like to see that happen? So I'd say a place that makes sense, obviously, would be Jersey City because of how vast the city is in, in regards to Hudson County. But I'd also like to see it in a place like Union City, a place like Sea Caucus, areas that just have a lot of area where you know development is going to happen and there are going to be new plots of land that will come up for either luxury buildings or just new storefronts in general. And having a Planned Parenthood in one of those places where it kind of tackles public transportation also, so it's equidistant for anyone that lives in Hudson County, I think it would be great to see a location in something that's either in Jersey City or just a little bit outside, but still accessible. Okay, that makes sense. Now, when we're talking just on the policy end, like if elected, could you give me, let's say, one or two ordinances that, or resolutions that you'd like to put forth before the board in short order? Absolutely. So one of the first things that I want to tackle, like I was mentioning, would be a countywide right to counsel. And what we have currently is a great start where they were given a $500,000 grant that was given to the Waterfront Project. And that's a great start, like I said, but we need to make sure that we add more advocates and we add more groups that have done work. Like you've had a uh, right to counsel JC on the show and they've been staunch advocates in Jersey City, but making sure that we have advocates all across Hudson County that could also be incorporated in this resolution to ensure that if we do have an office at the county level, that these are agents that are also included in that venture. Okay. Now you mentioned Universal, and I know in Jersey City, the reason that we did get Universal, or at least we have it at this point, there will be amendments, of course, but the reason that we have it at this point is because it's not economically feasible. Do you think that the county, that would be a different story? I think it would be a different story because we have such a large budget. I'm sure you probably know that we have a 600 million plus uh, budget annually. And if we're in a surplus at this moment, that means we've got money left over that we could be allocating to projects like making sure that we could tackle universal right to counsel or uh, universal health care or something to that effect. But we have that money that could be allocated to projects that could better improve the quality of life here in Hudson County. All right. Now, when you're knocking on doors over on the west side for that second district, and uh, you know maybe even a little bit of Journal Square downtown, I know it overlaps, but point is when you're talking to voters, what are the main concerns they have with their county government and or representative? Absolutely. So for a lot of people that I have knocked doors for, they aren't really in tune with county politics. They don't know who their county commissioner is. They don't know who their county government officials are. So it's kind of how I tackled going into policy in the first place, just trying to alleviate that educational gap because a lot of people don't really know who their local officials are. So trying to tackle it with two approaches. One, the educational aspect of letting you know there are these elections, there are these people that are running for office, there are certain policies that we should be fighting for. So when it comes to the policy end, people have been pretty uh, appreciative of some of the stances I've taken. Like, for example, one thing that I think sets me apart is that I incorporate mental health in my platform and trying to advocate for affordable mental health programs that could be found, uh, funded by county dollars. Or even if it's just talking about instances where we just have elected officials that aren't taking firm approaches like with Liberty State Park or with uh, the hit and run last year. Just approaches where they feel like their elected officials, if they do know them, aren't really taking the proactive approach to say, we should hold people accountable. Just being able to have that conversation with an elected official or a candidate where they say, this isn't just a person that's, for lack of a better word, ambitious in holding on to their seat, but someone that actually wants to do good by the people that they're trying to represent. 
All right, boy, take it. Adrian, hold that thought. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self storage. Let us be your good friend. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state of the art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201 521 9000 or visit online at hannapintodevelopment.com. Panapicho Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital, ER, police, or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for safe haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven. Hudson County View live on Uncut. And I'm still John R. Heidus, and I'm still here with H District 2 Hudson County Commissioner Candidate Adrian Gaynor. So, now look, as you know, Commissioner O'Day, one of the longest tenured members of the board, and, uh, you know, some people are already floating his name as a mayoral contender for 25. So what do you think about the challenges of this race? And do you think there's a clear path to victory here? I, I know for sure it's an uphill battle. That's something that we progressives do have to acknowledge before running these races and making that decision to run. And I know that Commissioner O'Day is already an early contender for the mayoral seat. So my approach has been that I have to tackle this like a field organizer, which is something I've done for the last three years or so, that the name of the game is just outreach, just hitting as many doors as possible, hitting the phones as frequently as possible, and just letting voters know that I exist. So going from that and making sure that we hit a feasible number of doors, that we get voters to turn out at the election, that we make sure we get people out for early voting, uh, vote by mail, and to ensure that we just reach as many people as possible with our message. And that's the name of the game, regardless of if I'm facing Commissioner O'Day or if it were an open seat. Okay, fair enough. Now, when you're doing this outreach, when you're hitting the phones, the emails, the doors, uh, you know, what's the most common theme? I mean, I know you said a lot of people you talk to really just aren't familiar with the county government. For those people that are, though, like what's the most common thing you're hearing? So the most common thing that I'm hearing is affordability and safety with our county roads. It's something that's huge here in Hudson County, and it's something that we have these grants that we could be allocating towards uh, Vision Zero, that we could be allocating towards low-income and moderate-income housing. Uh, my running mates, uh, Ron and Elaine, have probably mentioned the Community Land Trust, ensuring that we can get 10,000 new units here in Hudson County as a whole. So just making sure that people feel heard about these issues because it's an issue that people take seriously. Like no one should have to worry about crossing a county road like Kennedy Boulevard and fear whether they're a pedestrian or a driver that they may not go home that night. Or no one should have to fear that if they're getting priced out of their home that no one's gonna really be sw uh, going up to bat for them. So that's something that's been a constant theme. Okay. So let's, let's touch on traffic safety. So what we hear from people like members of Safe Streets JC, Bike JC, you know, we, we hear about how it's a hit and run epidemic. And uh, of course, you know, JFK Boulevard is, you know, documented as a very dangerous road. So if elected, what would you do to try to change that? So one thing that I feel that I've heard in the conversations with people that have mentioned street safety is that we have to make sure that we look at traffic studies and try and figure out what changes we can make to streets like Kennedy Boulevard that could make sure that the flow of traffic works well and also ensures pedestrian safety. So whether that could look like, I'm sure Elaine has mentioned it with the rapid bus lanes or making sure we have a combination of either bus lanes and bike lanes or one or the other on streets like Kennedy Boulevard. Because I'm sure you've seen that in rush hour, Kennedy Boulevard could be a nightmare with the right lane and the way that buses can't get seamless, seamlessly 
to the stop and then back into traffic. Of course. So making sure that we can tackle those issues to see once we get out, once we get that out of the way, what else could we do to improve Kennedy Boulevard? Whether it's making sure roads are paved safely or making sure that we have uh, more stop signs at places that don't really have the signage that's needed. Okay. Now, you mentioned affordability. Of course, we chatted about right to council a bit, but now when you're talking about that community land trust and uh, something that would progress over a decade or so, right? How would you see this panning out and how would the funding work? Could you just walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, with the county budget as it is, we have a surplus. That means we could be allocating money towards a project like a community land trust. So that means even if we don't have, I'm gonna spitball here and say, if we had $100 million to just put into a community land trust, it wouldn't mean that we'd take that whole part of the pie. We just would have to gradually uh, allocate maybe like five or 10% to ensure that we have a stable start so that we could start partnering with housing nonprofits and be able to purchase land and show that this is the land that we plan to develop to create that pathway to home ownership for low income families. So making sure that we can distribute resources at an equal level, because of course there are other projects that we have to tackle at the county level and ensure that we don't just take away funding and just throw it into housing and say, okay, this is the only project we'll be able to accomplish. But just to show that we can get funding for it, we can also make sure that if we need to supplement it through grants, we could apply for grants and make sure that this thing happens, that we get federal funding for it, local funding, state funding, whatever avenues that we need to cross to make sure that this is possible. All right, Adrian, so any closing thoughts for uh, me and this audience today? Yeah, definitely. I'd say um, my closing thought is I'm appreciative of being able to run in a, for a campaign against such a seasoned uh, veteran like Commissioner O'Day. And I just appreciate everyone that's given the progressive slate support. And there's more to come, regardless of what the outcome is for June 6th. Uh, there's going to be more ways to get involved in just advocating for everyone here. Adrian Gaynor, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Don John. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in, but we're not done yet. We'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. This thing rips. Oh, it is so quick. There's a lot of punch packed into this Bronco Sport. It's got a ton of horsepower. I love it. All right, now we're getting hairy. Now we're getting the fun stuff. Yeah. I like how we can get over or around almost anything. Yeah, I did your ride. <laughs> Super good. It's gonna be a good day. Growing up can be tough on kids. So much is going on in the world that can cause depression or anxiety. Unusual behavior for more than six months could mean they need help. Don't wait. For real-time mental health support and counseling, call New Jersey's Children's System of Care. CSOC offers free mental health supports, substance use treatment, and services for intellectual or developmental disabilities for all kids up to age 21. Call now, 1-877-652-7624. Introducing the all-new Ford Maverick. A truck for people who do stuff. And people who make stuff. People like Gabrielle Union. I make this look good, don't I? Who haul whatever they want to wherever they want. Like wood to build things made of wood with. And friends to get weird with. 
It's for long trips that the standard hybrid engine with a targeted EPA estimated city fuel economy rating of 40 miles per gallon helps with. That an eight inch touchscreen connects with. And any trip that this interior makes more comfortable. But we'll let Gabrielle tell you all about it. Or I could just tell them it's a Ford truck that starts at less than 20,000 MSRP. Yep, that works too. The all new Ford Maverick built to defy expectations. That's it, Gaudi View, live at Udgut, Chad Arhaitis. So the big news that uh, actually is out of Trenton via Atlantic City and Jersey City is, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the program, Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small endorsed Mayor Stephen Fulop for governor. And while this primary is, again, still about 25 months away, we've seen Fulop work in it for the past couple couple of weeks here ever since his announcement earlier in the month and uh, this is an interesting development because again as I noted this is a campaign that a lot of people thought would start and end in North Jersey and now we see a key endorsement from down south and of course that's Norcross country but more on that in a moment so first of all let's hear from Small and he said mayors have a unique understanding of the skills necessary to lead they have executive experience that qualifies them to be effective in the office of governor I'm proud to call Steve Fulop a friend. His accomplishments in Jersey City as a mayor speak for themselves. He is a transformational leader who will work tirelessly to help our state reach new heights. And I look forward to working closely with Mayor Fulop to make his campaign a success. Now, Small is pretty popular at Atlantic City. You know, he's won a referendum. He's won re-election by both pretty wide margins. I think that re-election bid was about uh, 68%. Uh, to 32, so not exactly close, and uh, that referendum was defeated quite soundly. Now, Atlantic City has the largest block of Democratic primary voted, voters in Atlantic County. It also has the majority, or I shouldn't say the majority, but a large portion of the Democratic County committee seat, so this puts Fulop in a position to vie for the Atlantic County line. Of course, now George Norcross is going to have a say in this. I mean, obviously, South Jersey is his power base. And Atlantic City is a area that he's very familiar with. So whoever he runs, whether that's former Senate President Steve Sweeney, or whether that's his brother Donald Norcross, or maybe someone completely out of the blue, whoever it may be, there's certainly going to be a, a little bit of a head-to-head -head clash over who gets that Atlantic County line. But in the meantime, this is certainly a good development for Fulop. And he said, after decades of Atlantic City struggling, Mar Mayor Small is moving the community forward with major redevelopment initiatives, lower property taxes, and improved services. And I could not be have more I could not be more proud to have him join our campaign. Mayors are in the front line of government and have a tremendous responsibility to deliver what their constituents need every day. There's no more difficult or rewarding job in politics. As governor, I will bring the experience as a mayor to the state house and enact policies that support local government and help it deliver the progress that residents deserve. So again, Fulop announced about two weeks ago, and the primary is not until June 3rd, 2025. At the moment, he's the only declared candidate from either side of the aisle. We're, of course, heavily expecting on the red side, if you will, we're expecting former state assemblyman and the Republican nominee in 2021, Jack Cittarelli. He is all but guaranteed to run, as is NJ101.5 host Bill Spadia, who has started a super PAC and has already been uh, attacking Fulop on some of his programs here. And now the other side of the coin, political observers are waiting and watching with bated breath to see what U.S. reps Gottheimer and Cheryl decide to do. And uh, we're also looking to see what's going on with Newark Mayor Ross Baraka, and as I mentioned earlier, Sweeney. And of course, there's other names too, like we've heard uh, Montclair Mayor Sean Spiller, who's also the New Jersey Education Association president. And the list goes on. But right now, it's just mostly a guessing game with a, a lot of eyes on Fulop, again, the only declared candidate at this moment. So let's stick with Jersey City. Uh, on the crime end, we actually know someone here that got sentenced to four months in prison for his role in the January 6th resurrection, or siege, or riot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of course, that was in 2021. Now, he posted a Facebook video while this was all happening. It said, we took over this uh, you-know-what in capital. And you know, it's, it's just really kind of strange that this is the way that it went down because if he did post on social media, the odds of him getting caught obviously would have been a whole lot smaller, but here we are. A jury found him guilty 
in Washington, D.C. federal court in December on four charges, entering and remaining in a restricted building, disorderly and disruptive conduct in a restricted building, violent entry and disorderly conduct in a Capitol building, parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building. So very specific with these charges. He was sentenced to four months in prison by U.S. District Judge Randolph D. Moss, along with a $2,500 fine, $500 restitution, and $70 special assessment. So long story short, that's $3,070 in some sort of court fines or fees. And interestingly enough, according to the January 14th criminal complaint, uh, that was from last year, I believe. Uh, let me just take a look at that. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was in 2022, yeah. So that said, in short, that Vargas had uh, posted this online and he, the tipsters contacted the FBI, at least two, and I would imagine they were from Jersey City. So that's a very interesting uh, turn of events. And actually, sorry, that uh, complaint was actually from 2021, not 2022. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, I guess the bottom line here is, uh, if you're gonna commit a crime, you probably shouldn't post it on Facebook. So with that, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Jersey City Council uh, after we come back. So we're gonna take a quick break. Stevens Jersey City Ford Certified Parts and Service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Hudson County View, live on Cut Chat, Our Highness. So let's touch on one more specifically out of Jersey City, and actually the Jersey City Council had their caucus meeting yesterday. And the one that caught a lot of people's attention, we saw some chatter on Twitter, was there was an ordinance that would raise fees for the city summer camp at three municipal pools. Now, it's interesting because this is something that hasn't happened in many years. And uh, obviously some council members had questions on why you would do this, uh, in particular when there's a tax increase on the way. So we heard from Rec Recreation and Youth Development Director Lucinda McLaughlin, and she said in short, this is an important one council members because we are talking here about extending the fees that already exist at our Pershing pool to both of our outdoor pools, as well as when they are in operation, as well as to amend the ways that membership exists at Pershing pool specifically, we have not had traditionally fees at either Pavodia Pool or Lafayette Pool, which over the summer at our own ordinance did permit those pools to be run for free for residents. Now she noted there's Green Acres funding for all three parks that the pools are in and therefore they cannot charge out of towners more than double what they charge residents. So that's an interesting thing that I don't think most people do. And another thing that she brought up is that the rec department allocates about $1.4 million in staff services to operate and maintain the pools. Therefore, nominal fees at the two outdoor pools make sense and are kind of needed for this to be sustainable. So at the end of the day, she asked the council to consider this. Uh, the base fee for the summer camp though is $150 weekly uh, and $75 for families that qualify as low to moderate income. So, and she did note that there are special exceptions where the rec department would try to find sponsorships for families that truly couldn't afford it. So I'm gonna post a video about that shortly after I leave here. I'm gonna leave that there because a couple other items I wanna touch on. In the West New York race, so first of all, the numbers that we're getting are quite similar. I mean, 
by North Hudson standards, you would say it's a dead heat in terms of fundraising. You got $129,788.81 raised by series. And then from Public Affairs Commissioner Cosmo Cucerillo, you got $96,075. And then cash on hand, $60,749.47 from Team Series. And you got $53,105.28 from the West New York Forward, the Cirillo team. The thing that I pointed out was that the Jersey City Democratic Organization and the Fund for Quality Leadership, two groups that are, of course, closely linked to Fulop, both gave $5,000 on March 31st to the team series campaign. And then in North Bergen, looking at the finance there, again, while it's been a relatively calm and quiet race, you just have a ton of spending going on there. I mean, you got Larry Weinstein challenging for the third time. He's loaned himself $479,000, then an additional $72,000 being spent on in-kind contributions. Meanwhile, you have the SACO team, who is, of course, heavily favored, and they have raised over $215,000, close to $216,000, and they have about $50-something uh, thousand dollars cash on hand. So with that, we're going to call it a week, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Hudson Media Group. Follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.